Understanding and Negotiating Book Publication Contracts We all regularly sign, click, say OK, or otherwise agree to a variety of contracts in our daily lives. For most of us, having the time to review them in detail is out of the question. But if you are an author, a book publication contract, also called a publishing agreement, is one that deserves careful attention. Its terms can affect your control of your book and dictate your rights and obligations for many years to come. A bad contract can even limit your ability to get your work into the hands of readers. This section provides an overview of this guide, an introduction to understanding and negotiating book publication contracts, and a primer on negotiations. This guide is designed to make it easier for authors to understand and negotiate their book publication contracts. Specifically, this guide will help authors understand common clauses that appear in book publication contracts, recognize how a contract's terms might affect their goals for their books, formulate author-friendly variations of contract terms, negotiate for terms that advance their interests, and Avoid terms that hinder their goals. This guide provides general information about common terms in book publication contracts and presents strategies for authors who wish to negotiate for more author-friendly variations. It does not apply this information to any individual author's specific situation. This guide is not legal advice, nor does using this guide create an attorney-client relationship. Please consult an attorney experienced in handling publication contracts if you are unsure how the information in this guide applies to your particular facts or if you would like legal advice about your rights and obligations. At its core, a contract is simply a an agreement between parties to determine the legal rights and obligations they have to each other. Often this is in exchange for money, but it could also be in exchange for a promise to do, or not do, something in the future. Contracts can be as simple as a casual promise between friends, if you drive me to the movies, I'll buy your ticket, or as complex as a multinational treaty. Contracts can be created in a variety of ways, orally, Yes, let's go to the movies, in writing, here's a cocktail napkin with an IOU for one movie ticket, or through your conduct, driving your friend to the theater, to the theater. Contracts can even be implied in certain circumstances. Contracts can also be formed through a series of interactions. For example, a contract could be formed through a thread of emails. A best practice in negotiating book contracts is to make sure everything the parties agree to is written down and that everyone signs the document reflecting this agreement. This provides a record of the agreed-upon terms and helps ensure that everyone understands the substance of the agreement. There is a lot at stake in a publication contract, so after you read the agreement and understand its contents, you should consider negotiating for terms that are most consistent with your goals. Authors may be tempted to sign a contract right away due to the excitement of receiving a publication offer. This is a mistake. The book deal is the start of a relationship between you and your publisher that will last for years and the negotiation is your opportunity to establish the terms of that relationship so that it works for you as well as for your publisher. Although it may be difficult or costly to hire an agent or an attorney, such a representative can provide expertise about how best to conduct negotiations and offer distance between you and your publisher if the negotiation gets sticky. Regardless of whether or not you have representation, understanding your own agreements is essential to getting what you want out of the publishing relationship. The key to any successful negotiation is preparation. 
Before you begin to negotiate, consider what you hope to gain from the relationship with your publisher. While authors, in general, share a common goal of wanting their book to be widely read, what they hope to get out of a publishing deal may vary significantly. For example, it may be important for you to have language in your contract that allows you to retain your copyright. Give permission for others to freely use your book by making it openly accessible. Use your own work in the future. Protect yourself from frivolous claims that may arise from the public of your book. Publish additional works on a similar topic, or easily get your rights back if your publisher is no longer making your book available or your book is no longer selling well. Whether it is retaining certain rights to your book, providing input in design choices, or making your work openly accessible or available at an affordable price, your publishing goals are personal and not necessarily reflected in a template contract. First things first, you need to read the proposed contract and make sure that you understand what it means. Remember, the purpose of a written contract is to clearly identify what the parties are agreeing to in order to avoid misunderstandings in the future. There's nothing wrong with asking for clarification or an explanation. The contract is for your benefit just as much as it is for the publishers. After you've read and understood your contract, it is time to negotiate. The key to getting the terms you want is to ask for them. If a particular clause is important to you, be upfront about it and be ready to explain why it is important. Your teacher is more likely to give you what you ask for, or perhaps come up with an even better solution, if it knows why you want something included in your contract and how this provision relates to your goals for the book. Lastly, a word of warning, make sure that the publisher you are negotiating with is a legitimate business that is able to make good on its promises. Every negotiation follows its own trajectory, but it is not uncommon for a contract to go through multiple drafts before it is signed by the parties. Usually, this process begins with the publisher sending you its template contract with the terms it generally seeks from authors, other times, a publisher may first send an offer letter with basic terms listed. Often, it will be up to you to initiate negotiations, either by marking up the contract or corresponding with the publisher about changes you'd like to implement in the contract. You may go back and forth, each making suggestions and accepting or rejecting counterproposals and the contract may go through multiple drafts before the agreement is finalized. During this process, remember to be patient, particularly while you're waiting for the publisher to respond to proposed changes or to answer questions. Trying to rush the process rarely works to your advantage. This is particularly true if contract changes have to be reviewed by different people and departments before they can be approved. It can also be helpful to ask who is signing authority on your deal. This might be your editor, but it could also be someone higher up the ladder whom you don't regularly deal with, such as the president, director, or someone in the legal department. If this is the case, it's likely that the contract negotiation process will take longer to complete simply because more people are involved. As the negotiation proceeds, it may become clear that you and the publisher just don't see eye to eye. If that happens and you've clearly reached an impasse, it's okay to walk away. Though it will undoubtedly be disappointing in the moment, it is better in the long run that you find the right publisher for your book. Remember, not all publishers are the same, and just because one wasn't a good fit doesn't mean that you can't find another that will fulfill your needs. In fact, there are more publishing companies pursuing innovative business models now than ever before. For example, some publishers specialize in publishing digital-only books, and some university presses now offer open-access publishing programs for monographs. Some authors may also want to consider self-publishing, which has become a much more viable option since the advent of ebooks and a la carte publishing services. This guide offers a variety of author-friendly changes that you may want to try to make to your publication contract. Most of these changes fall into one of four general types, clarifiers, sweeteners, softeners, and things left unsaid. The examples in this guide are not exhaustive, so it is a good idea to keep these for negotiating techniques in mind and to employ them creatively as you negotiate.
Clarifiers are changes in particular terms that make the contract easier to understand and follow and that eliminate vagueness and ambiguity. For example, say your contract reads, author shall receive 50% of the amount received from translations of the work. Does this mean that the author gets half of the publisher's gross revenues from the book, or half of the net profits once the publisher has deducted its expenses? Better to say author shall receive 50% of the net amount received from translations of the work so there's no confusion. Sweeteners are terms added to an agreement that provide one party with an incentive to work harder. Sweeteners are often phrased as conditional statements i.e., if RT does X, then Page will do Y. If, for instance, your publisher is anxious to get your book to market quickly, it may be willing to offer you a bonus if you complete your manuscript ahead of schedule. Or, maybe you want your publisher to aggressively market your book to particular audiences, in which case you could offer to take a lower royalty rate in exchange for the publisher making specific marketing commitments. In addition to providing extra motivation, Sweeteners also help ensure that the party's interests remain aligned over the life of the contract. Sometimes a sweetener can be added to recognize and reward success, such as by increasing royalties when a certain number of copies of the book are sold. Softeners are words and phrases that are added to existing contract language to provide a range of options other than yes you can do this or no you can t. Some common softening phrases you're likely to encounter are material, good faith, diligent effort, and reasonable. Sometimes softeners come in the form of qualifying statements, such as to the best of the author's knowledge. These phrases can be incredibly powerful. For instance, a publisher might be unwilling to give you unfettered control over your book's jacket design, but it would be willing to grant you a right to approve, not to be unreasonably withheld. This is a subtle difference, significant one. As you analyze and negotiate your contact, think about places where you could modify the contract with softening or qualifying language to give yourself either more control or more wiggle room, and also places where you might be willing to soften your requests if your publisher initially says no. Don't want to give me approval rights? Okay, how about a right to be consulted instead? Lastly, think about what isn't included in your contract, the things left unsaid. Many agreements contain a provision that states that the written contract is the final agreement between the parties. This is often called an integration, merger, or parallel evidence clause. This clause means that any promises made during the negotiation process are, in most cases, unenforceable if they aren't included in the final written document. This can be either a good or bad thing for an author, depending on what has been left unsaid. For example, if your contract is silent on your publisher's marketing obligations, then you could end up having to plan and fund your own promotional events. If something is important to you, get it in writing. Conversely, there might be certain terms that you don't want included. For example, multi-book options are generally written to favor publishers over authors so if your contract doesn't include an option clause you might want to leave this unsaid. Many contract provisions can be made better by clarifying, sweetening, softening, or keeping mum, or inserting missing terms, as the case may be. The only limits to what's possible are your own creative instincts and your publisher's appetite for innovation. Every term you see in a publication contract, good or bad, is based on a pattern that has emerged from negotiations in the past, and there's no reason you can't be the one to create a new template if that's what your project needs. Once you've finished negotiating your agreement, it is important to save a copy of the final publication contract signed by both you and the publisher as you'll likely need to refer to it in the future. For example, if you need to check the deadline for submitting your manuscript, verify how you divide up your rights with your publisher, or check whether you are eligible to get your copyrights back, you'll need to check the contract. Finally, keep in mind this simple mnemonic, the contract runs the relationship, so make sure you read everything. Understand what it means. Negotiate for what you want and
Save a copy of your signed agreement.